Open Suck. Hello, everyone, and good evening. Tonight, we got the co host, Kazuto Kirian, and we got our special, special guest tonight, Squid Gaming over on Twitter. How are you doing tonight, Squid? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. I know we had to reset the date once because of some stuff I was dealing with and whatnot. <laughs> How's it going, Carrie? How's your day going? So far, I have no issues. That is amazing. Well, my day's going good for everyone that's wondering. So, without further ado, we're going to start with the first question that is on deck tonight. And the first question is, Squid Gaming, when did you start playing Destiny 2? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, so I have the, <laughs> what is it, the disc for the Xbox? Xbox One? The One S? Not the newer one, but the, the generation before that. This, um, yeah. So I started on that, so that was like 2017, 2018, I think, around there. Okay. And uh came with, there's just the winter expansion and the spring one. <laughs> the two different ones, the, was it the, the Cyrus and then this, I think the Warman one. Yep, it says Warman. Yeah. That's when I first, like, I played the first one, right, obviously, but the second one, that's when I kind of jumped in when those, like, came out. Okay. We played on and off Very since. Very interesting to hear how you jumped in a little bit after those two releases, which is perfectly fine. I mm -hmm. help New Guardians all the time, and that's, like, the highlight of my day helping those new guardians get this stuff. So, Kazuto Kiri, like I always ask, how did you get into Destiny 2? Oh, I was like, I it was just for fun. It wasn't really a game at the time for me. It was just something I could do. I wasn't that much into Destiny at the time. It was just one game I found to play. I didn't even have the full thing at that at all. And it was back in Destiny 1 days, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Here were both of you guys coming from. I played since the beta for a lot of fun times. It's been through the, the time where sprinting didn't exist, where the mobility was an issue. Been through it all. Been playing since Destiny 1 beta which makes things really hectic. Well, next question for tonight. What made you get inside of Destiny 2 Squid Gaming? Was it something you saw, or did you just find it on the Xbox store? Um, well, I played the first one, and I just didn't have an Xbox for a while, like the next-gen one, so I couldn't play the next one, and then... I finally got the uh, one S, like, I think, yeah, 2018, I got it for one of my birthdays. And, yeah, I, I just got it with that. I got that plus Monster Hunter and I'm trying to remember the other one. Oh, Assassin's Creed Origins. I was just playing oh. those when I first got my Xbox. But I played the first one and played that heavy with my brother and stuff and then stopped playing that after a while. But came back on the second one, you know, like three or four years after that, and it's really fun. Uh -huh. That's really interesting. Kazuto Kiri, I know you said you just found it. How did you find out about it? Did you watch someone play it, or did you just find it on the Xbox store and say that was cool? I actually don't remember where, how I found it. I just I don't know, start playing it. I, I think it was more of a friend, but I can't remember. Okay. It's been so long since I played the original Destiny. Okay. 
question for you, the next question, Squid, is what did you miss from the content vault inside of Destiny 2? Um, say that again. Like, what is what content do I have inside the vault? Uh, like, you remember how Bungie vaulted a lot of content? Oh, like, yeah. Old raids and stuff. What is yeah. something you miss from side Destiny 2 that is no longer inside of Destiny 1? That's no longer inside of Destiny 2 that's in the content vault that you miss. I think, isn't that one planet, that water planet or whatever? Titan? Yeah, Titan. Yeah. With sea monsters? Yeah, those things were pretty crazy looking in them. I felt like I was on, like, uh, on Star Wars, like, the, was it Nino? I felt like that was that, but for Destiny. The planet of the, planet of the clones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Titan from, uh, you know, Destiny kind of gave me that buzz. Okay. And that's what I miss. <laughs> yeah. As a Tokiri, I know you missed the Lathizen, but this episode, we're not going to talk about that. What is something you miss? What planet do you miss the most, more accurately? If you want me to choose a specific planet that was vaulted, I have to go with Venus. Inside the Destiny 2 cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. I don't have one in Destiny 2. If anything that even gets close to it, it would be the original destinations on Mars. But the thing is, they did bring back Mars, but not the actual destinations. Okay. If I had to choose a planet, because this episode, we're going to talk about the planet, I would have to say kind of Mercury. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say Mercury is because Mercury has that background to it. It was a really big thing at the time. And to see that stuff, I kind of wish they did more with it. More with Mercury. Because an example of reason why I say Mercury is that we could have explored a little bit more timelines. No, bro. They didn't have much with Mercury. It was only part of the DLC, or thanks to the Osiris DLC. Yeah, I kind of wanted to see a little bit more, which is fine, but I still think Mercury because of that. Next question. In your thoughts right now, Squid, what is the biggest issue that needs to be addressed? Mm -hmm. Uh... Maybe, uh, maybe just the PvP lobbies, but I don't know. <laughs> That's what I, I think sometimes. Why do you say the PvP lobbies? Uh, sometimes it can be super, uh, just one-sided, <laughs> depending on who you have or who you're going against. Okay. That's the two carry. What is the biggest issue in Destiny that needs to be fixed? Well, going off of what he said on PvP, yes, there's a big issue with a bunch of stuff when it came to PvP. But my main issue is the problem with hackers not getting settled most of the time. Most of the time, mm -hmm. they find new hacks so quickly that the Bungie can't figure out how to disable them. Well, I don't think it's more of an issue in regards to that. I think what's going on is that the cheap companies are making it so that they can't find out. Like, let's take uh, what happened with... Uh, what is that? One of the major cheats that are still in the game because Bungie can't figure out what's making them. They're having an issue that they can't pinpoint it, which is why Battle, because Battle Eye can't pinpoint it. Because Battle Eye can basically search your computer for the cheats. 
and they can't find it because it's really hard to detect. So that's why cheaters are not in the game right now. That are hard that are still in the game. The biggest thing I have right now, that I think the biggest thing is inside Destiny 2 that needs to be fixed, is I know this is a biased opinion, but Gambit. And the reason I say Gambit faster than you guys can ask why Gambit. The reason I say Gambit is because Gambit is not fun. Getting the same map over and over again sucks. But I'm tired of having the same map, map over and over again. They tried to experiment with the heavy and stuff, the new heavy updates. But it's like, it doesn't work. Like, they stopped the Gambit lap. And it just, we don't know what to do. And to be honest, at this point, I would say goodbye, Gambit. Here's SRL. Well, let me say this right now. If they remove Gambit entirely, they would actually, I wouldn't be playing PvP at all. Gambit's the only reason I even play PvP. The, I don't like the concept of most PvP that had the aspect of both PvP and PvE into one game mode. And yes, I can understand why they are not adding too much to Gambit as they used to. It's more of the issue of they're doing a lot of updates to other things or not even con- they can't concentrate on that one. They're doing constant changes to crucible on a constant basis and they're adding so much stuff to pve they can't think of things on the fly just for gambit a small little game that was created a long time ago hasn't been updated in a very long time okay what are your thoughts that's good yeah i mean I don't know. They should. They could have maybe more maps with the uh, the gambit just to freshen it up. Or add some more changes there. And yeah, with the balance of the hackers and things. It's that's sometimes why I don't even play certain games because it just you know ruins the experience. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I was looking at to see where are the players most active at, and I can't. Find it right this second, and I don't know. I'll probably find it after stream tonight and use next episode where it breaks down what activities the players are currently playing the most. But next question: How did you feel about the bait of all fools given out to people with the the person with the disability, the guy? Let me elaborate a little bit more before you answer. What I'm what I mean about how uh, how did you feel about it? Do you think it's a sign of things to come? Like, did you think it was like a thing where they do the charities and stuff now? Do you think it was a sign of that? Good? Uh, yeah, I mean, just good sign of good faith. Um, you know, they... They do it here, and then even in in WoW, in other games, they, I don't know, have like the Make-A-Wish type thing or other type events, depending on the situation and what they want to do. I definitely know that. I, I, when I saw that, it made me see where they were with the extra made that exotic, and to see it flourish, and then see Bungie actually now helping so many people. It makes me happy to see that. And I think it was a sign of that. Do you agree with what I just said, Kasuto Kiri? Uh, the company is actually trying to reach out to the community and broaden their community to a point where people like playing the games instead of trying to run away from it. Okay. Next question. 
what are your thoughts on the ban process, Squid? Like, do you think they should add more to it? Add less? What are your thoughts on the banning, the current ban process inside of Destiny 2? Uh, let's see. Is that like with, uh, like if you do something like how, how the process of you being banned like that? It could be anything about the ban system. Anything you feel like do you want yeah. changes or things that you think need to stay? Um, yeah, if they could, I mean, just make it just a little bit more tight sometimes because it's just, I don't know. It, like I said, it ruins the game. They saw doing trials or something and someone's cheating in trials. It's like, well. <laughs> Has it been scary? You answer the question. All right. Well, when it comes to the band system, certain bands should be done in certain uh, different ways. For example, if someone does something that wasn't as severe, like a meme situation, it shouldn't be banned for a long period of time. It's just until they change their name, and then they can appeal for a ban with no issues. Well, for other than that, a person who actually Acts or does something that would be very offensive and destructive, they should be done longer. It's more depending on situations, in my opinion. Okay. Well, my thoughts is the band system is okay. What I would like to see is when people go on to Bungie.net to contest their ban. Sometimes they never get a response about it. I would rather know why I was banned instead of not knowing. Like, um, like, and then the other thing I would change is I would hold the content creators equal. Certain bigger content creators have a tendency to do all these bad actions and get away with it. But a smaller content creator wouldn't. And I would like to see a little bit more justice in the community, if that makes sense, rather than unfairness. And I would like them to add a system where it shows why people are banned. Like, let's say if you were banned for cheating, I would wish it would be like public knowledge so people can know, oh, this person is cheating. He's on a new fresh account. Let me report him. What are you guys' thoughts? Do you think they should add a thing where if someone's banned, they should, people should know why? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that'd, that'd be nice. So that way you know, um, and you can just be able to gauge people better with who you know you interact with. Now, I I think that Kazuto Kiri. What are your thoughts on that? I do agree that it's at least let people know behind it. Most I've seen when it comes to a lot of different system or games when it comes to banning, usually you do get notified of the least behind it. It would be better to keep that running. Yeah, I know some people like, some people I don't remember who, but I remember seeing someone on Twitter about it, and they still don't know to this day. And then there was um, one other incident which I'm looking on for right now, because I did a YouTube video. But there was something where I was thinking, have you ever heard of the Bach and Gangster? Squid? No, I never heard of that. <laughs> okay. Back in July 8th, around July 8th, 2021, there was a person by the name of Bach and Gangster. He was banned, and he tweeted at Bungie and the community managers at the time prior to the Destiny 2 team, about why he was banned. 
and they came out and flat out said that he was banned for cheating, and they detected multiple accounts under his name and about it. Do you think Bungie handled that situation appropriately? Let me know your thoughts. Quid. Uh, well, I'm not so familiar with it, but I mean, if they have their reasons, I guess they do, but I don't know. I don't know if the guy did something wrong, but if he's done it once, that's the thing. If they've known about it, then I guess they have their right to keep them out. They don't care. You're I don't know on this one. I'm as stumped as would here. I wouldn't know much on that, especially since technically they did tell him, but at the same time, I wouldn't even know if that's enough information. Mark? Who's the host? I think uh, how Bungie handled it was appropriately. I think what they did, telling him flat out, was better. Because the community, he was a really big PvP person. And to know that he was cheating at the time really made things interesting. Because then he, those crazy headshots he had were just basically edits. He really edited it to make it look like that. And it just made it interesting. Well, uh, let's move on to the next question. Squid, I know you haven't played much this season, but how did you feel about the season so far as you were playing? I I thought it was cool with the... Um, the air effectiveness uh, stuff that they mainly buffed, and then with that new exotic that I don't know what it's called, but it, like you shoot, it's the SMG, and you shoot, and it gives you the uh, gravitational thing to float. So, oh, I like I that thing a lot. You're talking about, yeah. I so. think I have it's 30 seconds, and I would tell the name but while I'm waiting for that to load. Kazuto Kiryu, what are your thoughts on the season? Uh, this, well, it's really not too bad. Uh, I don't like the weapons in it, though. The weapons are really great. I actually love that they recreated the Aikilis weapons. So. Okay. Well, um, for the record to be known, the weapon um, Squid was referring to the Matacor. I think that was a really good test for strand wise. And I still think that is the test to this day that they were testing it to see what exactly happens. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting, I think, to know. Yeah, which we'll get into a little bit later on that. My thoughts on the season is that it's was an okay season. I'm I'm wondering how what happens tomorrow, as we're supposed to get in like a secret mission or end of season mission storyline. I want to see how that goes because I feel like the storyline hasn't wrapped up. And the reason I say this is like the last mission, you get these encrypted files. Does it lead us to how do we get to Neonuma and stuff? So, Squid, next question. How did you feel at the end of season of the plunder? Um, I'm still uh, trying to figure out what happens because I don't know. I haven't completely played through the, the season. Yeah, no, this is the last season. We're not talking about... Oh, last season. season. Sorry, yeah, I thought you said the, the plunder. plunder. I remember, like, in an episode prior to that, 
I told you that I was going to try to um, change the questions uh, that were a little bit made for that part. So what yeah. do you have on the end of the season of The Plunder? Do you think the storyline wraps up good? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it wrapped up good. Uh, Sending it up for the next things. Kind of built off okay. of it. My thoughts on the end of the season, like I said, I don't think it's over. I think something big is going to happen. Because it's like, is Rasputin just going to be tied to that chair where he is right now? Or is he going to get full-on exo legs? What's going to happen? What happened with Zebo or Rath? How do we find out about Neonuma? What were those encrypted files that Anna didn't know about? There's still a lot of questions that I'm hoping that next season and the end of the mission clarifies that. Well, next question, Squid. What are your what are you looking forward to the most for Lightfall? Um really just I don't know, the new powers. Just to see how each class works with their powers and what they're gonna implement for them. Okay. How's it to What are you looking for the most to next season? Straight up, same thing as in the power of Strand itself. Being able to get around as much as a Titan could, I would love to do that. It seems like you're both uh, really living Strand. Kazuto Kiri, I know you are a warlock main, and I don't like playing the other two characters. Wait, yep. what character that you play? Uh, I played warlock in Destiny 1, and then I played hunter in Destiny 2. But still playing hunter, and then kind of sometimes warlock, but I don't know. I like, I like both, but I might branch out to Titan here and see what's up. Okay. Let's go for out of book point in regards to flying around like a tight tent. Well, I have a bad something to say for those listeners. Titans are now going to have to carry the hunters and warlock. Because I know hunters and stuff can fly, but all you do is a Titan on Thundercrash and you connect your strand to the Titan. And you can thunder crash right across, which makes Titan basically caring. So what I'm looking forward to the most, come like call, is the storyline. I want to know what happens. Because that's going to be interesting to see what happens in regards to Callus and the Witness and Neonuma. Right now, we don't know anything of the storyline. All we know, it involves Callus. And it makes me interested. Like today, we officially got the season name. It's called Season of the Defiant. And it's going to look really cool. But I want to know what leads up into that. Is Callus going to defy the Witness? and help us destroy them? Or what? Are we going to defy our fate? What happens in that? But, so that's what I'm looking forward to the storyline. Of course, I'm looking forward to the new supers. It'll be nice to see what happens, especially as someone that plays all three. Well, next question. Wait, this one is designated just for you. What platform do you currently play on? I know you used to play on Stadia, according mm-hmm. to your Twitter file. But are you back on Xbox now that Stadia is gone? Rip Stadia. Uh, well, I'm on, I guess you'd say on each one, because I, I mean, I, I'm probably going to buy Lightfall on Steam. Um, that's just, I don't know, out of my PC platforms and stuff, that's one I prefer now since I've got a PC. And then I do have Xbox. I could download it there. 
But yeah, I'll play, I mean, the console version a little bit too. Because I like to have it like set on everything. I just, you know, it's almost just like playing a, you know, like a Minesweeper thing or Solitaire. It's like you have to have it on everything. <laughs> That's my destiny. <laughs> so, but yeah, got it on Epic and on Steam. But I'll probably buy it for Lightfall on uh, Steam. Okay. Yeah, I know that I'm dealing with that myself. Right now, I have it on PC, but unfortunately, I do have Xbox, and Kazuto Kiri is also on Xbox. But right now, I'm trying to decide whether I should get it on multiple platforms. So it's like that really weird feeling. Yeah. So I have Stasis on Xbox too, so that's where I'm also at. It's like, well, if I get it on PC, I have to get Beyond Light too, as well as the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I already have the other ones. It just leads that. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably going to hold off on Xbox for a little bit longer. It's not as crossplay, so you guys can still play. Yeah, I know. That's what I've been doing. I just, I, I want to put on both in case I have to play on Xbox. So yes. what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably just going to save it till next time. So, next question. What is your most favorite memory, something that you really enjoy doing and is your favorite memory from death? Uh, probably when I was playing the Grass of Avarice dungeon with my friends and ran it with my brother and my other friend and we're just playing tricks on him like you know telling them to hit the button and then <laughs> he kills him okay, yeah <laughs> i still get help i got help from it <laughs> from kaza tokiri he has given so much crap on it because i kind of let them when i do my sherpa clears I kind of hint them to the wrong button so that they learn not to do it again. <laughs> and it, it just, it's, what I do it for, it isn't to hate and harass them. It's content. And that's why I ultimately do it. Kazuto Kiri, do you have a favorite memory from Destiny? I loved the light and rage so much. We've done more clues on that than anything else. I loved going in the underbelly the most. The paths were so easy to memorize. <laughs> okay. I think I can, without even pulling up the map, I think I could still even remember the whole design of the underbelly. <laughs> Yeah, that was a really good memory. I know Kaz is referring to Scythe for those who didn't quite underhear everything. And I definitely know that 100%. Even I know the underbelly, because that's what Kaz and I first met on. And to answer this chat question, things are going good, PC Carly. How are you doing tonight? And thank you so much for stopping by. Good, PC Carly. I do. Oops, I was just popping in the left in there, too. <laughs> hey, I heard that. So, Squid, do you make any lifetime friends from playing Destiny? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I, I guess you'd say a couple, and then kind of just play other games with them, too. But a uh, couple of them, yeah. Um, play a lot of, like, Destiny 2, Vision 2, and there was uh, Outriders that was out too at the time. Yeah, we would switch in between a lot of those games. But, yep, lots of friends I made from Destiny 2, man. <laughs> Kazuto Kiri, did you make any lifetime friends? Technically, yes. Only you and Morse would be counted so far. Yes, I have a couple. Unfortunately, one of them 
is no longer speaking to as I don't know what happened because of this. He just out of the blue left the server and I can't get a hold of him. That's the only communication I had with him. He's not on Xbox anymore. So I only have a couple. Of course, it's Kazuto Kiri. Gotta love my man, ride or die. And then I have a couple other friends that I got into D2, finds by THPS, and another person by the name of Morse, who Kaz and I both have friended. So, those are some lifetime friends I have made from Inside Destiny. Quid Gaming. I have one couple more questions for you, but let's start with this. What is your favorite aspect of Destiny? Is it the lore, the storyline, or the gameplay? Uh, I mean, it's probably the gameplay, because, I don't know, I always like how just every, uh, every couple of years, it's like different rotation of weapons that you could get with, and then different powers, and... I don't know, they always have something that kind of freshen it up a little bit. And, yeah, just, the t- like, I don't know. Like, if you looked at the beginning of Destiny 2 to where it is now, it's like, it's, I think the Titans or whoever we'd be fighting would just mess them up just because of the, you know, the aspects and everything that you get now and the different things that you can at least buff up and make better with the uh, crafting table and everything. <laughs> DLC builds and everything. Okay. Kazuto Kiri, what is your favorite aspect of the game? I have to say, the lore, because so many interesting con- uh, stories behind it. What doesn't get me is that even in the lore, we're supposed to be the strong guardians, but it's in more fact, we are actually weaker than the most of the people at the tower. Yet in the gameplay, they show these people all as weak as hell. Yeah. Even the Korra would beat the living crap out of us if she chooses to, and yet she got her ass handed to her in the Red War. Yeah. Definitely would say that. I have a couple aspects. I definitely love the storyline, and I definitely love that. The storyline is a big thing for me, and the lore. Like, there was one entry in the New Collector's lore book that has this. I'm going to read the subject line. Thanks. Thanks. Basically, one of the stuff, because I can't find it right now, is that Ikora tried so hard to help Osiris in the new Osiris lore book that he even, that Ikora even took Sagira to the Enclave to try to help him have Sagira back. Now, that's a big step for me. To see Ikora do that is a really good aspect, because we didn't know that until the Collector's Edition lore book. And I really enjoy the new lore. Like, there was a couple things about Talos' past that is not in any of the lore books. Talos was never supposed to be an emperor, but he used an Amkara to wish for it. So those are, like, some stuff that I really enjoy, some of the reasons I enjoy lore. Well, I know you haven't done the season stuff, but I can still ask you this question, Squid. What do you think the secret mission is going to entail? What do you think the secret mission is going to entail tomorrow? I don't know. Maybe uh, some Sparrow stuff. (laughs) I always like to... Good fair race. <laughs> <laughs> SRO. So, 
Kazuto Kiri, what do you think the secret mission is going to entail tomorrow? I really think it's going to be them trying to either stop the traveler from leaving Earth or stop someone from taking the traveler. Because the name of the mission is called the... Please don't speak about the name mission on the podcast, cats. We do not tolerate spoilers right now. Well, that was already spoiled to everyone. That was so stupid. It's not my fault. It's already been spoiled. So, But some people that are listening might not listen to the spoilers. I should have made that with you before. <laughs> Basically, I just think that it's something to do with the uh, protocol that rescue to me, and that's about it. Okay, I can see that because of because they brought up the protocol twice this season in regards to him shooting the traveler. In regards to the part where he rewrote Clovis's protocol. And that Anna stopped him in a secret mission, one of the last missions in regards to him being stopped by Anna. Well, there is my thoughts on the season. What I think is going to happen is that we are going to prevent that Duo Wrath is going to take control of the war sets. And Rasputin is going to go in there to stop her. And that he's actually going to plug himself into the mainframe and explode everything for us. And I think Rasputin is going to say, I kept a secret from you. Neptune is indeed happening. At least that's what I think is going to happen. So, next Mm -hmm. question, Squid. How do you think we're going to find out about me and you? As we haven't found out how we know about it yet in-game. Uh, I don't know. So just, I think, let the wait and see. I feel like uh, there's either someone that's, I don't know, going to discover something or some extra other power. Like how the pa- like with the new powers coming out, like how those tie together with it, maybe. Okay. Let's see. Cassidy, how do you yep. find out about me and you? Uh, not really that I can think of other than that we're going to find out in the next season, as far as I know. Okay. At least that's what I think. Okay. I still it's think we're least- going to... Okay, I still think we're gonna find out the season by Rasputin by the classified files. There's no way that they will say anything. So I think Rasputin is gonna tell us. Hey, Squid Game, have you read the Fate of the Game article that has came out today? That was released today. Uh, no, actually. I think I put that. Okay. Well, I wanted to highlight some of the changes that are crucial. They're going to be changing stuff. There's going to be some new Crucible stuff, some new season changes. Power level is going to be changed. And stuff, there's going to be an activity where everything's being changed. So I'm really thinking that things will go well. And I think, overall, it was a good change. Kind of took period. I know you sent me a TikTok, actually, a little bit prior to the episode starting, about the changes you heard. What are your changes? That you, Did you like the changes? Yes, very much so. First of all, I've always hated the idea of, I miss the original concept where the exotic weapons and gear were easier to get a hold of when they added the whole function of the actual legendary lost sectors, which made it much harder to get a hold of these weapons. I was pissed off. But now that... They... Do you mind speaking up? I can't really hear you very well. I can't speak louder. This house is 
Just speak a little. Because I'm sleepy. Sorry. But I was still. Original, the original concept was that legendary or exotic gear was easier to get a hold of, but they took that away and put in the legendary lost sector. I hated that. Now that it's taken that away and bringing up the original concept made me happy. Yes. So, for those who did not understand what Kazuto was saying, because he has speaks a little close, a little quicker. Um, he was saying that it is that um, the way the lost sectors work, they're not longer going to be legendary lost sectors. They're going to drop from core activities. So that's going to be really, really interesting. So this is for uh, the last couple questions or for Squid. I'm just going to kind of start asking, um, and that would be an answer, then we'll continue. When did you start streaming, Squid? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think here, because it's been at least a couple of years. So probably, I think, yeah, it's, it's been like two and a half years, so it'll be hitting three years in December of this year, so whatever that is. So two years and just a month, I guess. <laughs> Congrats. 2.1. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I want to also say, because I decided I was going to include Kaz on this. That's fine, um, yeah. Kaz is still just started streaming about, I think now it's been about a month. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah, so he's fairly new. I just started podcasting December, so this is about three months I've been podcasting off and on because of some personal issues I was dealing with. But I've been dealing with content for exactly, I'll tell you right now. I've been dealing for content in Destiny. Besides YouTube, I'm going to say I've been streaming on Twitch since 2020, so about three years. I will be three years in November on Twitch, November of 2023. Nice. So, this, see where that is and stuff. I'm really liking how you're not giving up. Seeing some of your tweets today that. You're trying to get some more followers. I'm really happy. I wish you really good luck on that. Next question. Speaking of that, what are some struggles that you're facing with content creation? What are some struggles you face? Squid. Um, the hardest thing I think is just being consistent with the content. But that's the hardest part for me. So I try to fight that every day. <laughs> Okay. This question also involves Kazuto Kiri. What are some struggles that you're facing with content creation? Well, I'm not that much content at all, especially since I'm not a profile. Okay. So, what I'm hearing. From Kazuto Kiri, I don't know if you guys can hear him, so I'm just going to reiterate this, is I think Kazuto Kiri is struggling with having the issue of growing. Like, he's trying to have followers come in, and he's not having enough people. And that's what I'm hearing, based off of what I'm hearing. In the future, I'm going to talk to him about figuring out a way to turn him up. That way we don't have this disconnect in future episodes for those who are listening throughout the episode. Well, that is all the questions I have tonight. I want to thank Good Gaming for being an amazing guest tonight. 
And I also want to thank my co-host, Kazuto Curie, for coming in and support us. I know your mic's been having issues today. Squid Bean, when, where can these guardians find you if they have any questions? Uh, you can find me Squids Gaming, uh, Squids Gaming at Gmail dot com or Squids Gaming on uh, Twitter. Any place to ask a question, I guess. And then I stream pretty much every day, so <laughs> yeah, you probably catch me live a lot. Okay, Casuto Kiri, where could these people find you if they want to come support you and come out and ask you more questions? Uh, and they can find me on my Twitch, which is at CooperTaylor92, or on my Twitter, which is showers. But I don't usually have things posted on Twitter yet. Well, I heard that. So I'm going to reiterate that one more time. You can find Kazuto Kiri on Twitch at CooperTaylor92. You can find him over on Twitter, Sean Maxwell, Sean Maxwell Jowers. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a full Twitter account yet. We're going to be working on that here in a few days. Me and him, so we're going to have that up soon. You can find all things Destiny. All A underscore T underscore P. No, A underscore T underscore D underscore podcast over on Twitter, all underscore things underscore destiny over on Twitch. Unfortunately, all the usernames are taken, so we have to do it that way. You can come join the links to the server. I'll put it down below and stuff in the link in the description and stuff like that. Um, you can also find me over on my main channel at WorkStorm2. All no spaces all together. And you can find things on all things testing, like I said. We do have a couple servers. We have the Arcstorm server, which is on my main channel. And then we have the Discord for the podcast. You guys are all welcome to join both of those. And if you guys need a clan, Kazuto Kiri and I have a clan that we made together. Well, thank you guys all for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.